hi i'm dollar from the future at the end of this video but um, enjoy a video where i try to upgrade my car to 62 kilowatt hours and uh, do some rust proofing i thought this was just gonna be a fun fun quick video but it turned out to be something completely different so enjoy okay excuse the mess in the shop but uh, i just removed this uh, 40 kilowatt hour pack that I've been using since uh, I think a bit over two years maybe on this leaf and now we're installing a 62 kilowatt hour pack but as you can see here I'm doing some rust proofing and you might ask yourself why am I doing rust proofing but let's go outside and look at a battery that hasn't been rust proofed Okay, so let me show what happens to batteries that don't get rust treated. Uh, this is a 7 year old 30 kilowatt hour battery, which is hooked up to the grid by the way, but uh, more on that in another video. And um, if we zoom in here on the back side, we can see that rust is definitely starting to form and um, it's getting uh, not so bad, but quite severe in uh, some places. And um, I've actually had way worse than this. I recently had a 11 year old battery pack here. I've put some pictures up on here. And uh, it got so bad that the sides were completely rusted. So you could just poke your fingers in through the battery casing. Which is uh, very bad. So yeah, that's what we want to avoid. So if we apply what we learned from the pack on the outside. I'm uh, using some metal paint. Uh, I like using this brushed on applicants versus the spray paint because when you brush you can put on a thick nice coat and uh, here you see that I, I've only applied this thick coat on the sides of the battery and I've kept the top of the battery uh, without any thick paint. This is to help it to be able to dissipate heat better upwards uh, when the battery pack heats up. Uh, but I did spray a light coat of uh, some rubberized uh, sort of anti-scratch undercoat thing. But this was a very, very, very thin layer because I, I wanted to be able to dissipate heat. But again, if you're doing this serious amount of frost proofing, you might only want to do this if you're in a country that is uh, very cold. Like if you do this in southern Europe, uh, you will risk insulating the battery too much and uh, causing it to uh, heat up way more than it should when you are rapid charging. So yeah, there are some pros and cons here. But I'm in Finland and it's cold as shit here, so uh, this is what I'm gonna run with. Now we can look at the car. Okay, welcome underneath the car. Here are the rails uh, where the battery fastens. And uh, this leaf is uh, eight years old, it's from 2015. So you can see that there is a significant amount of corrosion that is being uh, formed here uh, between where the battery pack and the like chassis meet. This is the place that you cannot wash because there's going to be lots of cover in, covers in place etc. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to brush off all this uh, surface rust using a grinding wheel uh, to get it uh, nice and clean down to metal. And then I'm gonna paint on this uh, rust proofing paint. So yeah, let me do that. Another thing I forgot to mention was that there are some sections with bare paint that haven't been uh, like rust proofed at all here. But luckily these have uh, managed to stay quite rust free. So I'm gonna do uh, something else here. Uh, I'm gonna add uh, sound proofing uh, to these sections. So I cleaned this up uh, using some brake cleaner and then I stuck on one of these uh, bitumen pads just to increase uh, ride comfort and I've gone ahead and I've done all these sections that uh, have this bare uh, paint. You cannot attach these sound deadening pads to places which have already gotten the factory on the coating spray because it won't stick there. So it can only be applied in places where there is uh, bare uh, paint or bare metal. So yeah, I'm gonna continue with that also before painting it. Here is a corner that I have uh, completed. So all the rails and sections areas where the battery normally will mount, it is completely covered in this rust proofing paint and these sound deadening pads. 
this will make for a very nice end product. Speaking of overdoing it, I also removed the 12 volt battery and cleaned off all the corrosion here on this uh, metal plate and painted it black. So now it's gonna last a whole lot longer. Okay, so I'm just about to roll the new battery in, but I thought I would show you what this looks like. So I've basically gone through all the common places where it usually rusts and I painted these and in some places I put these, um, these sound deadening mats and Keep in mind, I'm not going for 100% coverage, I just want the hard to reach places when the battery is in that usually rust. Because I will rust proof the entire car at a later stage. But this is just the battery. So now we can put the new battery pack in. Okay, some of you were a bit disappointed last time when I did a 62 kilowatt hour upgrade and I didn't show you the springs. So I'm actually going to fit the springs this time. And um, I also have the OEM, these longer, 40 millimeter longers, uh, these rear. Uh, flanges that hold in the battery. I painted these uh, black also where the bolt holes are because um, Yeah, you can see here that uh, these like to start to rust especially at the bolt holes. So yeah, just some extra protection uh, Keep in mind. I don't want this to last forever just a bit longer than usual because I intend to keep this car for some time Okay Okay, so here's a quick illustration why it's so important to get the right splash guards uh, this is the original, the one that is furthest away, and this is the new one intended for the E plus battery. And you can notice that it's a lot more deeper, so this will make it so that it looks flush when the battery is mounted. It won't look odd or anything, so yeah, it's very important that you get the correct splash guards. Part numbers are in the description. Okay, so real quick here, here is to clear the P3102 error code. We can see that we have turtle active uh, warning light and I've taken out leaf spy here and I'm gonna go with read DTCs and it has detected the P3102 invalid battery. Then I will go uh, back and I will go into clear DTCs and I will select, uh, there's a special drop down here for P3102, select that Execute and while that is working Ta-da! It disappeared. Now the car works That's it. Very easy. Very quick. Okay, so I'm out doing the first charge test here And um, I don't know if you can see this. I haven't changed the springs yet But you kind of can see that the, the rear sits a lot lower than the front So that is why those springs are necessary. So I'll just charge the battery up verify that it charges and uh, Yep, yeah, then I will go in and change the springs Okay, so the last part of the job, spring replacement. So I removed the wheels, uh, undid the rear shocks, and uh, I got the original spring out. And here's a quick comparison, and I don't know how good this will show up on camera, but the new spring is um, it's significantly uh, thicker. Yeah, so I hope this will help out quite a bit. Let's see. And we are done. This is what it looks like now with the new springs. So it looks quite identical to the front. Uh, it's very high. I think we gained maybe like four centimeters, so maybe like 40 millimeter ride height increase. And yeah, this is very nice. So this accommodates for the larger battery, very nice. So yeah, now I'll go and test to drive it. Okay, that really didn't go as planned. So this new battery, uh, I charged it up and uh, immediately when I started to drive it, it just lit up a check EV warning symbol on the dash. And I checked the cells and there was some imbalance in the rear stack and this usually should make your alarm bells go off inside your head. Um, so big insulation issue problem uh, reported on the fault code, vehicle will not be able to restart. And while I was driving it, it also uh, cut all um, heat. Uh, the HVAC system stopped working and I checked the codes while driving and it said that like uh, high voltage error so you cannot get heat while driving which is quite critical in winter so this new battery is no good and what makes it worse is that it's a 62 kilowatt hour pack and um, the cells are quite hard to get um, so even if I open it up and I find uh, some broken cells or cells that have expanded or cracked or something, it will be very hard to source replacements. So if you know of 
somewhere in the Euro Europe region where you can get cells, please let me know. But yeah, I'm feeling a bit down at the moment uh, because this battery was quite expensive and it doesn't work. I can't drive the vehicle like this because it will randomly stop because the problem is too severe. It's leaking high voltage to ground, which makes it, yeah, it you can't drive it. So I guess this is uh, part one of a series where we um, either fix this battery or scrap it or something. But uh, I've been spending so many days now uh, rust proofing this car and rust proofing the battery because this was going to be the final battery upgrade that I did for this car. I really wanted to focus on CCS now. But um, yeah, it looks like CCS is going to have to wait <laughs> until we get this battery sorted. I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to downgrade back to the 40 or yeah let's see but if you have any thoughts ideas uh, if you want to cheer me up uh, <laughs> put a comment down below and uh, I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye